How should you measure a scoliosis curvature? Certain parameters have to be met in order to reach a scoliosis diagnosis. Scoliosis really involves the development of an unnatural sideways curvature in the spine. And this curvature needs to have a rotation or a twist associated from it. And this is what makes scoliosis a three-dimensional problem. And the rotation is normally into the concavity of the scoliosis. When the curve is measured on an x-ray, it's normally measured by something using a Cobb angle measurement, and the angle needs to be 10 degrees or greater. Now, the Cobb angle is known as the gold standard in assessing scoliosis. And this measurement is taken during a scoliosis x-ray that involves drawing lines from the topmost tilted vertebra to the bottommost tilted vertebra. And these lines make an intersecting angle that's expressed in degrees, which is called as a Cobb angle. Now, in between these two topmost tilted vertebra and bottommost tilted vertebra, there is a horizontal vertebra. And the horizontal vertebra is called the apex, and that's the apex of the curvature. Where the apex is is where it tells you where the scoliosis is located. So if the apex is in the thoracic spine, it will be a thoracic scoliosis. Apex is in the lumbar spine, it will be a lumbar scoliosis. And if it's in between the two, it would be a thoracolumbar scoliosis. Now, why is this severity important or understand the severity? Well, the Cobb angle or the higher the Cobb angle really means that the more severe the scoliosis is or the more out of alignment the spine is relative to normal. Scoliosis range in a very range in severity, meaning from a mild to a moderate to severe to a very severe. Mild scoliosis is when this Cobb angle measurement is between 10 and 25 degrees. Between 25 and 40 degrees is what they call it a moderate scoliosis. Severe scoliosis is anything greater than 40 degrees. And anything greater than 80 degrees is called a very severe scoliosis. Condition severity helps us determine an effective treatment plan, meaning we know mild cases respond better than severe cases to conservative treatment, and we normally get better reductions with mild cases versus severe cases. But we always say that every severe case was once moderate, every moderate case was once mild. So treating cases when they're smaller will always produce a better result long-term because we're intervening the course or the progressive nature of scoliosis before it gets there. So intervening sooner always typically means better results. And early diagnosis is only effective if you're going to treat early, meaning a lot of cases are diagnosed early, but then they're told, don't worry about it, and nothing ever happens. The reason why x-rays are the standard in developing or diagnosing scoliosis because it's the easiest to use. They're accurate, they're reliable, it's non-invasive, it's expensive, and it's very accessible, meaning most patients can have an imaging center that's located next to them, they can have an x-ray taken, it's very quick, very easy, very cheap, and we can actually see what's happening very accurately in the scoliosis. Now, there's a couple things that can happen wrong. One thing is that the scoliosis could be taken, x-ray could be taken laying down. If the scoliosis x-ray is taken laying down, it will definitely underestimate the severity of the scoliosis. The scoliosis x-ray could be taken in a bad position, meaning the person could have their arms positioned not correctly, or it could be twisted or turned in front of the x-ray machine. That will also alter what we see on the x-ray. So therefore, accurate x-rays, meaning accurate positioning, produces an accurate x-ray. So when I see inaccurate x-rays, they're typically done as a result as of inaccurate positioning that produces an inaccurate x-ray. Now, there are other forms of x-rays that could be done. There's three-dimensional x-rays or other type of x-ray that's available for patients, but these are not like a normal x-ray, meaning the benefit of a normal x-ray, it's a picture that's taken in a split second. It's like, boom, a split shot. And movement is very normally not affected by the x-ray because it's done so quickly. A three-dimensional x-ray is more like a scan. It's scanning from the top to the bottom and scanning in both dimensions at one time. And then the, the computer is taking the summation of that scan and all the movement and averaging. So it's taking an average of the movement done during the scan, which can take anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds. And for younger patients, it could be harder to, to maintain that normal in that normal position or that not, or that that same position. So therefore, we know three-dimensional x-rays are also more expensive, they're more time-consuming, but the biggest thing is they're not as accurate because of that one thing, because it, you can't get a shot taken in one second, it's a scan over time. Standing on MRIs are another way of measuring scoliosis, but again, they're more expensive and they're done in slices, meaning there are slices that are taken. So normally you're comparing two different slices as opposed to one image that sees everything in one shot. So therefore, they're not necessarily 
necessarily more accurate or more reliable. In fact, more likely they're going to have less accuracy or reliability, reliability in a standing MRI. The main drawback from a traditional X-ray is that it only provides a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional problem. Because like I mentioned, that scoliosis has a bend and a twist. And normally you can see the bend very well. You can see the twist, but only somebody who specializes in scoliosis is going to really understand how that three-dimensional effect is being portrayed in this two-dimensional image. So therefore, that's why it's so important to have your scoliosis x-rays interpreted by somebody who focuses on scoliosis. Very often, I'll see patients walk in my office with x-rays taken by other providers, and the uh, x-rays were measured or analyzed, and they weren't fully explained properly or analyzed completely because there were somebody who doesn't really focus on scoliosis and doesn't understand the complexities associated with measuring a scoliosis uh, cob angle. Even though the measurement of the cob angle may be only two lines and looking at the apex, but interpreting and how that's moved three-dimensionally in space is more complex than just measuring a Cobb angle. Scoliosis has a wide range of severity and types, meaning there's idiopathic scoliosis, neuromuscular scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, degenerative scoliosis, and traumatic scoliosis. And all of these scoliosis present differently on the image. So therefore, having this series of images that only now only look at the spine from the front or from the side and determining what type of scoliosis can also help us determine what type of treatment option that you'll need. Since x-rays are so easily uh, uh, taken and so easily available that x-rays can also be used as a, as a component during treatment, meaning we can use patients or uh, take patients through treatment and we can monitor their response very, very quickly with an x-ray. Now, some patients tend to be concerned about um, the, what x-ray can, what x-ray effect can have on a patient. Now, the good thing about Scoliosis Reduction Center, we have the latest dig digital scoliosis x-ray technology, which minimizes radiation exposure, exposure meaning x-rays how much exposure you have or the time that it takes to take the film is directly related to how much extra exposure you achieve. The faster the extra machine, the less exposure you have versus the slower x-ray machine. When I first started practicing to take full set of x-rays, sometimes between three to four seconds of exposure, these days it's, in, it's measured in milliseconds. That's how fast these x-rays are. So even though the dangers of x-ray exposure are not really fully understood with current X-ray machines, but we also, but we, when we look at any test, meaning X-ray, MRI, three-dimensional X-ray, anything like that, we always have to compare the test versus the benefit of not testing and not knowing. And really, the dangers of a scoliosis progressing and causing problems far outweigh any risk that an X-ray could cause over a period of time because we know x-rays are very, very minimal x-ray exposure and cause very, very minimal health risks. So the x-ray far outweighs the, um, the, the, the risk associated with taking the x-ray, knowing the benefit is we're getting an accurate treatment for the scoliosis. We also can use specifically targeted x-rays. We can take smaller x-rays in different areas to, uh, to evaluate the biomechanical uh, integrity of certain areas of the spine to give us more precise measurements, and this can normally only be done, done through x-rays. X-rays can be very useful not only in diagnosing, but also seeing how the patient's responding to treatment, and we can adjust the treatment necess as necessary as the patient's responding through evaluating their spine through x-ray. So measuring a scoliotic curve is a very important thing that must be done on a very specialized x-ray, and it's classified in a, in a severity and type and location and helps us to determine the correct treatment plan, which can be customized to, to match and meet that individual patient. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, I do, diagnose, assess, and proactively, proactively treat scoliosis patients of all severity levels. And these patients are all ages from, from you know, infants to you know, late stage adult life and everybody in between. We see curves that are 10 degrees in size to up to the largest curve I've ever seen has been unfortunately 155 degrees. And it's in measuring the scoliosis and determining their customized treatment plan and then monitoring them properly throughout the, with the x-rays that we take to make sure they're responding appropriately and getting the response that we want. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.